Before we get started tonight, ladies and gentlemen, on another episode of Fast Break here on IE Sports Radio, I want to introduce you to one of our sponsors, the Southern California Warriors Semi-Pro Football Team. The world of semi-pro sports is unlike any other sports organizations. Players play, in, play to play in hopes of so many different outcomes, where it's playing to get film, to try out for professional teams, mid-time colleges, or just playing to, to stay in shape. No matter what, all semi-pro, all semi-pro players have one thing in common, and that's playing for the love of the game. The SoCal Warriors have been on a quest in their times to give players second chances since 2017. Wherever you're in Southern California or anywhere in the world, give semi-pro sports a chance. If you love your sport, you may get that second chance you've been waiting for as an athlete. You can find them on social media at Twitter, at SoCal Warriors, on Instagram, Southern California Warriors underscore Warriors, and Facebook, Southern California Warriors. Now on to the show. Phoenix going up 0-1, uh, 2-0 in the NBA Finals. Can they close it out in Milwaukee? Or do the Bucks have some fight left in them? We'll discuss that in Game 3 in real time, which is about to tip off here in a little bit. Plus, the Orlando Magic hire, has hired a new coach, Mr. One Jamal Mosley from the Dallas Mavericks. We'll discuss that. Also, Nigeria beat Team USA last night in the exhibition in Las Vegas. Is it a big deal, small deal? We'll discuss that and much more here on Fast Break, live on IE Sports Radio. Your direct free for that, as always, sports, and you're welcome to join us. And join us as you shout tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in with us. We took a Little break off from last week, and we're back in the fold. So, thank you for joining back with us. D-Lock, how you doing tonight, sir? I'm doing pretty good, man. Um, been an exciting past couple couple of hours. Um, got a good game coming up. Then we got the news that the Magic got a coach. So, things are not bad. Um, still... Doing research on them, but uh, it's not more so about him. It's more so about the franchise, in my opinion. Yeah, you know we'll, you know it, we'll discuss him more in a little bit. But uh, you know to kind of shift our focus to games one and two. The Suns went two zero in that series in Phoenix, and you know. I don't want to say like a beatdown, but they kind of staked off the Bucks pretty good. d what were your opinions of the series going 2-0? And can Milwaukee, you know, fight back in this series against the Suns? Well, this is going to be an important game. Um, to be honest, game, uh, what was it, game, game two, I looked like the only person I was trying to play was Giannis. Um, Ruth Lopez wasn't too much. I'm not. I'm sorry, not Ruth Lopez. Chris Middleton was nowhere to be seen. I had him in the nine dollar uh, multi entry trying to win million dollars. Million dollars. He didn't help me. Um, Drew Holiday didn't didn't shoot good, but it's kind of effective, but could have been better. Uh, so, to me, 
they're going to have to be much more aggressive or efficient tonight. But like I said before, like, they have entirely too many. They cannot cover Phoenix guards. It just seems like they're going to cause issues for them uh, all game. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do uh, tonight. Yeah, I mean, let's go, let's go back to the last game, game two. I thought Milwaukee did a great job, you know, kind of shut down the paint, not let Aiton be so efficient like he has been in the playoffs. He's been killing everybody, every team they've been playing if down low pretty damn good. So I thought Milwaukee defensively did a great job on that. I was like, okay, y'all shut me down. He ain't really getting much down low. But if you sit and close the plank, closing the gap and stuff like that, that means you let those other guys, those role players kind of free up and, and play their game. And that's when you go back to that look at game two. That's when Cam Johnson had a great shooting night. Jay Crowder had an excellent shooting night. And, you know, Bridges, great, decent shooting night. So much so that, you know, once those guys got going, you you gotta, you had to respect them and guard them. And that's when, you know, they advanced went back to Phoenix. Those one-on-one matchups, those screen and rolls, Chris Paul getting those favorite matchups against those bigs. And, you know, they, start, they started killing them. So... I don't know. I don't know what Mike Boone, the host, and the crew is going to do, you know, to kind of combat that. You know, I I don't, as, as a coach myself, I, try, I just try to think like, damn, you did a great job shutting down the paint, but let the world players get open and shoot open shots. I don't know what else you can do. In my eyes, what you think? Uh, I mean, to be honest, I have to be my thing is there's not much he can do. I'm thinking that the biggest thing he's gonna have to do is they're gonna have to shoot much better. Yeah. Um, they shot horrible the last game. Like it just looked terrible, in my opinion. Uh, so for me, um, I'm just thinking that. It, if they can't get there, if they cannot shoot, it's a waste. They're going to have to be able to shoot uh, better because this team is going to, uh, Phoenix is going to make their shots. You know, they're going to click. As you can see, Jay Crowder could pop a three at any point. Uh, Chris Paul could pop a three at any point. You know, so all of these guys here can catch fire at, at, any, at any aspect. Uh, so for me, Bridge, as we know, is a, is a dangerous three-pointer that he can click, even though he's very inconsistent. But he is a person that can play a huge part. So uh, for me, um, they're going to have to shoot well. I don't know if that means Brent Forbes need to get more minutes um, or whatever the case may be, Pat Connor Hogan. They're mil- really missing Dem Vincenzo right now. Yeah. Um, and it's showing. So uh, Jeff T, I don't know if you – I'm pretty sure you've noticed, but – he was getting some more minutes, uh, so it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting, man. I mean, to be honest, it's just gonna they got they're gonna have to figure out something. I believe shooting is gonna be the key because uh, they can play great defense. I think both of these teams are great defense minded teams. It's just that at this point, um, you know, the shooting is gonna tell the difference, and we know Devin Booker and and we know Devin Booker and uh. Chris Paul can light up, catch fire in the point. Yeah. And shout out to the chat. Shout out to Terry Rodriguez. You know, Terry, you know, he's saying, you know, the Bucks plus minus is terrible. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you, Terry. Uh, it's just like, you know, the certain combinations that they've ran out there the past couple of games. It really hasn't clicked yet. So I, you know, like you mentioned, he like like Milton. I mean, he started off slow, but then like third quarter and stuff like that, he he'll get start to cooking and stuff like that. 
but you wish you know, that effort would be there earlier. Holiday, you know, he played great defensively last game, but shooting wise in the series, it really hasn't showed up yet. Maybe tonight, when, you know, before this game tip off, he can get going. You know, Giannis, he's looking great off, you know, the knee injury. You know, there was like questions about that. You know, I had real concerns of it because, you know, I was like, uh, do you send him out the first two games and let him heal up some more? Or do you throw him out there and see what happens? And so far, so good. He looks pretty well, pretty, pretty damn well. And then, you know, also shout out to the chat. Um, our girl here, Miss Gina, repping the bay. One of our new shows here on IE Sports Radio. She hosts the NorCal Sports Show, uh, or NorCal Sports Show, every Monday at three Pacific, six Eastern. Every Monday, so do check out Miss Gina. Appreciate you ch- uh, jumping in the chat today. Also, Mr. Terry Rodriguez, one of the hardest working men in um, IE Sports Radio. He hosts Set Point and the SoCal Sports Show. Here for us on Ice Force Rail. So please do check those those three shows out. Y'all get a chance on IceforceRadio.com. But back to the sh- back back to the finals though. Seems like the Bucks are going to start line up with the same lineup. Drew Holiday, Middleton, Tucker, Giannis, and Brooke Lopez. If you were Budenholzer, if Lopez it's not playing well for you, playing well in the mismatch, it's not playing well defensively. Do you go small? Just do you go to the smaller lineup quicker with Giannis at center? And maybe have uh Pat Connaughton out there or throw out Jeff Teague? Or what, what how you combat, you know, Phoenix taking advantage of your bigs and you know, abusing them really. <laughs> Especially like Chris Paul and Devin Booker. Well, for me, my thing is one person that didn't get a lot of minutes last game was Bobby Portis. Um, I think you got to get him get him situated. He has to be in the game at some point. Uh, so that small ball can be played. Uh, yeah, I would definitely have Giannis playing a little bit more, uh, playing small ball, but it just seems like at this moment they have to get in. Uh, I, I, they have to get their shots, so uh, Brooke Lopez is a person that can click their shots as well. Uh, but I just feel like for the most part, you know, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna play um what these guards can do for them. You know, Brooke Lopez is gonna be a little bit more effective, but him he's a bad matchup with DeAndre Eight. I think DeAndre Eight will terrorize him, if you ask me. So uh, I would like to see Bob Porter's coming a little bit more, but yeah, I definitely play um a little bit more small ball. Um, because at this point, um, you know, he's not really doing any damage. He's not doing anything for them that much. Brook Lopez, I mean, if his if his three is not falling, he's not doing much. So it, it's it's going to be interesting to see what they do. Uh, and I see already Drew Holiday is trying to click early. Um, yep. So this is this is something that they really need at this moment. But uh, they can get started early. Um, you know, maybe those three start to start to look better for Brook Lopez, but uh, Bobby Portis needs to get in a little bit more. You ask me, um, and see how that see how that plays out. But small ball is probably going to be an option of their of theirs. Yeah, and Drew Holiday with a good defense on Devin Booker and forcing a bad shot on him. So. Holiday coming out pretty pretty good in the per, first couple of minutes. And Booker's trying to look for a foul call, but that was just good defense right there. So, I mean, you can't complain about that. And then Giannis when gets the dribble. Lopez trying to take him on. <laughs> uh, he's trying to reverse on DeAndre Ayton, but it didn't look good. And Ayton go down the middle and make the layup. I think if Aiton goes off tonight, well, it has at least a monster double-double game, I think 
That's all she wrote for uh, Milwaukee. This is my opinion. Yeah, well, the thing is, you know, Yon, if Aiden does eat, which in a sense he can, uh, it puts, you know, it puts Milwaukee in a very bad situation. Uh, so, like I said, I don't think nobody's going to stop. Uh, nobody's going to stop Giannis. And Aiden is going to be somebody that's going to do what he do regardless. So, uh, for me, we just got to see how it plays out. Uh, because at the end of the day, um, there's a couple – you know, it's a couple like Chris Middleton is gonna have to play huge, but um, you know, Aiden is in a very favorable matchup, in my opinion. Yeah, and I think one thing and everything Milwaukee that's been that's been killing in the per- first couple games. Um, Chris Paul's mid rate game has been deadly. And, you know, he made a shot, you know. Before coming out of this stretch, and then now he well, missed the layup. A lot of contact there, but his mid range game has been deadly so far. And Holiday missed the three pointer. Giannis with the rebound in the and one, I think they're going to call it. Yep. On Bridges. Yep. And you can't have that right now. <laughs> Actually, I think they well. No, I think they're going to be on Booker. No? Call it on one. Yeah. I mean, it really seems like right now this game is going to get kind of crazy. But, um, again, they jumped out on them like this before the last game. So, this is going to make it very interesting. Uh, And it's early. So we'll come back to this game. We'll, I mean, we'll jump in, in and out of this game. Early on, Milwaukee's up 8-4 so far. So, and Devin Booker with the, ooh, got the foul call. So he's going to the line for a three-point play. So we'll discuss, we'll hop in and out of this game uh, throughout the broadcast. And Gina um, in the chat is saying, you know, she said, Giannis ain't going to score 42 again. By rooting for him, uh, you know, if he come out hot like he is right now, I think he got a good chance. So, you know, don't discount that. You know, so and, and, and plus, if he don't over overthink at the damn free throw line, too, then I think he he'll be in for a good game. So we'll see. But D Lock, let's hop over to Orlando real quick. Your team, the Magic. You know, they hired a new coach, Jabal Mosley, former assistant with the Dallas Mavericks under Rick Carlisle. Signed a four-year contract with the team. Mr. Mosley plays college ball at Colorado, but then had like a playing career over in Europe and whatnot. The guy that seemed like he's grounded, uh, grounded around the league and stuff like that with Denver, Dallas, and a couple other places. Where are your opinions of this hire for your Orlando Magic? Um, well, I think he's a good hire. I think he's a very good guy that could do a lot of I think he could do a difference with, with the franchise, but again, um I saw I thought the same thing with Frank Vogel. You know, I thought the same thing with Scott Skiles, um, Steve Clifford. And I say all these names because it just feels like, you know, all these guys we could have, we had, but we just um, didn't buy into being, you know, the dynasty or building for a while. Uh, we stopped early. You know, we said, okay, well, hey, this person isn't, this coach isn't doing what I need him to do right now. It's quick. So what we're going to do is we're going to just start over after a couple of years. So, I think he's a good hire, but it's going to be more so about what we do as a franchise. Um, that's going to be huge. If we can't buy in, you know, then uh, that's going to cause uh, major problems. <laughs> we'll see another coach stay for two years and then get booted. So 
no, it, it, this decision is is good, but it, at, the, at the end of the day, it boils down to what the Magic want to do. You know how we act. Sometimes we want to play good. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes we want to be good. Sometimes we don't. But the building uh, to be great is what we're going to have to do or be successful or want to win. Like, you know, I have to see that on the consistent. Rome wasn't built on one day. So it's going to take us some time, but I don't know what the front office wants to do that. So that's going to play um, a huge, huge part. I think it's more so about the franchise than the person that we actually actually hire. I don't know. If, I, don't, <clears throat> I don't know if you noticed this or not about well the NBA all season so far, but between like the Mavs, Blazers, Magic. Um, I feel like I'm missing somebody. Uh, Boston, and then um, oh, what's his name got hired somewhere? Let me look. Let me look. Let me look. Let me look. Yeah, those teams all hire black head coaches. You know, we, you know, we talk about. I mean, the national media kind of made a point, like how some of these, you know, white assistants or former players get a job without, you know, without much, you know, background and stuff like that. But you know, we we would see with Mosley. You know, Yukota in Boston, Kid in Dallas, who, you, you know me, my feelings about retreads and stuff like that. Then, you know, I, I did love the Chauncey hired for poor Parkman. I always thought, you know, if he gets into coaching, I think he'd be a great head coach. But, you know, for, um, for, for Orlando, I hope this works out. Because, like you mentioned before, like the coaches you just named, no st- stability at the head coaching position. None. And I think if you get that situated, I think you can go a long way. Yeah. Um, I think that's going to, like I said, I want to say in favor of that because it just seems like, dude, this is like our fifth coach in the past like 10 years. So they're not lasting long. I mean, you're drafting the player, and by the time your players start to develop pretty good, you're gone. So um, that's my only issue is how committed are they to him and committed to winning? Because if you sign him to a four-year deal and you let him go after two years, he's going to draft somebody this year that he wants to build around, but two years is not enough time to build, in my opinion. And it's like our front office don't know that. Well, and, you know, let's still talk about the Magic here. <sighs> they had two draft picks within the top 10. So let's look at what Jamal's come into. Two uh, lottery picks. You got two injured players be coming back in Fultz and Jonathan Isaac. You got another guard and Cole Anthony that played pretty well for you for his rookie year. I think we'll make a service at what you do at center, you know, between Mo Obama and Wendell Carter. You know, um, RJ Hampton, another young kid that's played that played pretty well. You gave him minutes at the end of the season. So and also Gary Harris, when he's you know finally healthy you know, he contributes very well for the team. So, I think he's coming to a situation they know they're in rebuild mode. You know, we talked this before we got the show. You mentioned about the unicorn, Porzingis. Could they make a run at him? What, uh, do you think they should make a run, trade some of these assets and do something with that. What, what's your opinion on that? 
I think we should. Um, because the thing about it is, you need a star to build around. Uh, we got a lot of young players, but what are we doing with drafting? You know, two more players. Um, that we're gonna have to develop, especially. And I think we were already hearing this. This is like a, this is like a, a four player draft pick. You know, so um, unless you're gonna trade all the way up at the top to get uh, somebody that's you know, a Jalen Suggs or somebody, or Cade Cunningham. Um, trade those picks and go get you a superstar, man. We talked about Ben Simmons being available at some point. Um, poor Zane looked like he wasn't happy. Uh, so, look for somebody. Um, my dream, obviously, is Luka, but to hell. I mean, only a dream. But I definitely would push and try to get a superstar. Someone like, well, or get a star. Get somebody that, you know, um, could bring put more you know butts in the seats and also add more wins to what we've had in the past and somebody he can actually build around. I think well, we talked about this in the past. I think the Ben Simmons deal is doable. You know what? What you know they will give up? I I don't know. Maybe throwing like a Gary Harris, throwing maybe a, a draft pick, one of those top draft picks. You know, maybe throw in uh, because you need to match up salary too. Maybe throw in Jonathan Isaac, maybe Harris, Jonathan Isaac. Is Terrence Ross uh, upcoming free agent? Yeah, you got a yeah. So you got a couple guys that you can move. Um. I'm thinking Jonathan Isaac would be a piece that a lot of players, a lot of teams would want to. Yeah. Because I think, you know, seven foot guy can dribble, defend multiple positions, can shoot the ball. And I think if he can, you know, get right with the injuries, you know, can finally be that. I guess that true seven footer that can do damn near every, everything, in a sense, kind of yeah. like you know, like Kevin Durant. We we seen with Kevin Durant because you know, multiple teams in the league have for years have been trying to find that that seven foot clone that do everything, that dribble, pass, rebound, shoot, all that stuff. You know, the guy likes of Perry Jones, Tim Thomas, um. Uh, Lamar Odom. Who was the thing about Jonathan Bender? Porzingis. You know, you could. Giannis, I think he's a different case. You know, I think I'm pretty sure the Bucks probably want him more efficient shooting, but I think they take what they get from him. And right now he's kind of, you know, working damn Phoenix down low. But. I think this, if the, if Orlando will truly want to do it, I think Ben Simmons is gettable. Now, we'll, I don't know how much Moore wants back and whatnot for him, but Moore got to know, like, after this playoff series, oh, yeah, that term, yeah, AD, yeah. <sighs> yeah, AD to a point, but I'm talking about somebody that can – Hell on a rock, like damn, you know. I imagine Johnson or Al Iverson, something like that. Like a point guard, yeah. Like a point. That's 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 that, that's why I mean like that. I mean Giannis can handle like like look hell look at Giannis right now. He can handle a rock, but he ain't gonna really gonna cross you or stuff like that. You can try to like bull you over. We're talking about like got handles like Iverson can shoot like damn Steph Curry can rebound like damn Dennis Rodman play defense like damn PJ Tucker and so forth in a seven foot body. <laughs> but 
that's going to be hard to find. But like you said, everybody's looking for that. You know, everybody want that player. I mean, be a good piece to have, but it's going to be something that's going to be very, very hard to find. Um, so for me, now I wouldn't, like I said, Ben, I, we talked about it. Ben Simmons would be perfect. Um, or Zing or somebody. Uh, but, you know, how does this, can he convince the front office that, hey, okay, you got two picks early and you uh, use those to go get you an already established player instead of trying to, you know, build. So uh, for me, you know, I, I really think that it sounds good. And I think he did be, a, I think he's a very good hire, but you know, can they like be committed to winning? That's just going to be the answer. Like, can the Magic really be committed to winning? Can they really want to win and say, "Well, we're going to stay the course instead of, oh, well, we're not, win- we're not, we're not making the playoffs long enough, but we don't want to make this sacrifice, so let's just scratch and start over and rebuild again." And see. In the NFL, if your even if your team is sorry, you still make money and stuff. You know, we see that in the NFL. Like even your team sucks. You know, and shout out to uh, Andrew Hairball who does our soccer show that be uh, come up here in a couple hours. But he's a Cleveland fan, and look how long they suck, but they still make money. They're still profitable. In the NBA, there's only like a good handful of teams that are really profitable like that. And at some point in the time, and I know you as a Magic fan got know this. Hey, you got you got to start selling some merch and stuff like that here soon. You can't be stopping and going and stuff like that. You got to push some tickets somehow. And hopefully, you know, with this new coach and whoever he gets at, as his staff, hopefully they either they find somebody to draft or trade or free agency. But you gotta let this man do his job, and you can't. And just because if things don't go right within two years, like you mentioned before, you can't show him the door unless they t- truly abysmal. But you gotta let the man see things through. Because think about this, D Lock. The Wizards don't have a head coach yet, but you know, they didn't look so great, you know, with Russ and Bill in the fold. They barely made the playoffs. The Celtics, we don't know what they're gonna look like. But I think you is gonna do a great job with them. Charlotte, with the young talent there, who knows what they're gonna look like. Cleveland, I think they still be in the bottom. Chicago, I don't know. To be honest with you, maybe Levine and Vooch can make some things happen next year and make the playoffs. Who knows? The Pacers, we'll wait and see with TJ Warren coming back and Levert back in the fold and see how they look with um, Rick Carlisle. Detroit, they still be in the bottom. Knicks, they show they can they can play. But think this thing about D Lock though. You know, damn near we'll see, about ten teams will make the playoffs in a sense. Four of those teams will playing in playing games. We saw what happened in the West with Memphis making a run. And I think if Orlando can show patience if a young roster like uh, Memphis, I think they can make a run too, in my eyes. That's just me. Well, they can. I I don't doubt it. It's just, you know, you have to lay the foundation and, and understand that, okay, this is day one. This is year one. 
It's year two. Like, you know, you got to know that the progress happens over time. It's not going to be next year we're already uh, in this great situation and we're already at the NBA Finals. So you have to be, you know, committed to, okay, hey, you know what? This is what we're trying to do. And we're going to commit to a long term so we can be consistently good because we're in the right conference too in the East. But there's a lot of times the teams that make the playoffs or in a playoff bubble, they're under 500. So um, now a lot of people talk up this, this year to injuries and you know, all this other stuff, but the Lakers had injuries. You know, Brooklyn had injuries. So many people dealt with this. Uh, if that was, if they want to chop it up with injuries, then they wouldn't have fired or Steve Clifford. Uh, they wouldn't have parted ways. I've actually read an article of him saying that he didn't want to stay somewhere where <clears throat> they weren't committed to winning. And I believe that's the second or third time I've heard a coach say that about Orlando or hinted, hit, hinted to them not wanting to win. So for me, it just, you know, it's gonna it's gonna boil down to the franchise. We can bring in hell, we could bring in Phil Jackson. But if you don't want to win or you're not committed to winning a long term, it doesn't matter. Yeah, we'll put a bow on that and we'll probably we'll, we'll talk about the magic here pretty soon and stuff like that. You know, we got the draft coming up here in a couple weeks. That's vastly approaching. So, you know, we'll see how the future of Orlando starts. You know, especially two draft picks in the fold in the top 10. You know, the rumors of potential moving in the offseason. So we'll see how things shake out. But let's turn our focus real quick. Uh, Team, Team USA against Nigeria. Team, Team USA. They have these exhibition games uh, before they head to the Olympics here in a uh, few weeks. So, so you had this game last night. <sighs> Man, see, like everybody's in the panic mode <laughs> in a sense by Team USA. We ain't supposed to lose these type of games. What are your thoughts of Nigeria beating Team USA? Yes, last night. Big deal or small deal? Very big deal. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. More so of a Houston hat. We have a problem, big deal. Um, I remember somebody showing um a picture of, a, I believe, a score when Nigeria played your team USA a couple of years ago. We were blowing them out like 50 or something like that. Like, you know, some, and it's no shot towards Nigeria, but look at the roster that we have. I mean, you got Draymond Green on the pick and roll, Dave. I mean, not pick and roll, but he's set the screen for day. When Kevin Durant is at the top of the, on the other side of the, the court, at the three point line, like, you know, there's all these weapons, and we're known as Team USA to have a lot of a lot of weapons. We're supposed to be blowing these teams out. So for me, uh, I think it's a big deal. Now, I think one of the reasons why it's not as big of a deal as the many is because and I feel like we have um, – I don't think the Olympics is going to be – the teams are going to be filled with some of the teams like Argentina, a couple of all these other teams. They're not as deep as they were previously, you know, prior, pre, uh, previous Olympics. But, um, hell, even if we're trying to get the chemistry right with all those players on the team, we weren't supposed to lose that. So, um, I think well, Chris Middleton is going too, right? Him and Drew Holiday? Yep. So they're missing Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton, and Devin Booker. Right. So 
you got those guys missing. You know, looking at the box score in minutes, Kevin Durant played 28 minutes, and Jason Tatum played 27, and Bradley Bill played 25, and Lillard played 27. And then Kevin Love, who I still don't understand why he, he how he got on the team, my eyes. Unless like people like John Collins or Julius Randle and probably somebody else said no. That's the only reason why I think he's on the team. Or that if they asked Jimmy Butler, he said no, and then they asked around to, you know, they got to Kevin Love. That's the only reason I could think of. I don't know what the hell he's doing on the team either. You know. I don't know if they ask Car- hell, even Car Anthony Towns. I would ask him, which his ass need to be playing. If he said no, just say no, then his then I, I give him up hope on him. As a true franchise player. But yeah, just looking at this boss score, you know, Jer- Jeremy Gray played 16 minutes, Draymond had 19 minutes, Zach Levine had 21. And then, you know, the select guys like Sadiq Bay and Darius Garland, they have about like six minutes apiece. So, you know, for me, not a big deal. But it's kind of concerning because, you know, I looked at his Nigerian roster. I knew Mike Brown has taken the, the helm of that team. I think in like, well... Typical Nigerian team, you know, got some nice athletes, some names that you recognize, like Taryn, you know, like Taryn said about um old boy from uh USC, uh me too, uh middle of uh, USC. And FK Udo, you know, he's played for Baylor, you know, and a couple other names. Uh what's his name? Precious Akoye from the Miami Heat. Gabe Vincent for Miami, Josh Akogi uh, from Minnesota. I mean, some names you'll recognize, but you know, those African teams, you know, they ain't known for their shooting and stuff like that. Yeah, so I'm that's like, true. I, mean, I just, I just was, I was expecting, you know, better game anyway. So I, I just saw that. Like, oh, okay, not bad roster, you know, but. Damn, man, they hit 23 pointers on the U.S. I was like, shit. <laughs> you know, I was like, dang. And it must be one of those nights they were just hitting in my eyes. So, you know, shout out to Gabe Vinson. He had 21 points for Nigeria. You know, and shout out to Mike Brown for having those boys playing and ready to play and all that stuff. You know, I think if he does well with his Nigerian team, you got to look for him for another head coaching job in my eyes. Because if Rip, if Rip call out and Jason Kidd get another gig around the league, oh, yeah. I'm sure Mike Brown should get another gig as well. Somewhere. Oh, yeah. But, you know, I mean, go ahead. I just, I just, you know, you always expect the USA just to blow out all these teams just because of the talent that we have. But the the, the focus is, you know, on the USA as well. The attention is there. So teams are, you know, the target, shall I say, the target is there. They're waiting. They want to play USA. Everybody wants to play them. So um, it's going to be interesting. Also, I'm pretty sure uh, Kevin Durant wanted to go to uh, – take a team and win a goal without any major stars on there except himself. So, we're going to see, man. I mean, it is early. You are missing a couple pieces, but I don't know. I mean, maybe I should be too worried, but then again, <laughs> I mean, we're just supposed to be like the the best team, like in the all the talent that we have. So, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. 
You see, Luca got his country down to the, the got them advanced Olympics. Yep. So I mean, we'll see. I mean, well, I mean, there was that mindset that USC could, USA can be anybody with the pros, but you know, those I think was it the O four Olympics kind of show that eh, not not the case. You know that Larry Brown uh, led squad. You know back in the day with Tim Duncan, AI. God, who else on that squad? Lamar Odom, a uh, young LeBron, Melo, and D Wade also. And I think Omega Oakford was on that squad as well. You know but that that incarnation of that team kind of showed like okay, some of these other countries can ball, like Argentina, Spain. You know, Greece and others, which Greece, you know, I think always had legit squads, and so is Spain. Like you mentioned about Argentina, I think, you know, they just kind of aged out with Ginobili, uh, Scola, and a couple other guys kind of, you know, just got old. And then, you know, we're going to see from Spain, you know, the Saw brothers, they up in that age too. I think this is going to be Powell's last run in the Olympics. But you mentioned about the new blood and stuff like that, about like Luca, there's Sabonis. Um, I could be missing a couple of people, folks. But, you know, Giannis ain't going to play for Greece, but the competition's kind of been, you know, been leveled up. It sucks that Canada didn't make it. They got a lot of young, a lot of young, young dudes on that squad that can ball. And it won't surprise me come, let's see, by, come 2024 that Canada will be in that field next year. With Shea Gildress, um, who else I'm thinking about? Um, oh, God, who, who was <laughs> I lost who I thought of, but you know, led by you know Shea Gibbs, Alexander, but Andrew Wiggins too, right? Yeah, Andrew Wiggins. I know Alabama. They had a couple kids play on there too, as well. Uh, who was I'm thinking about? I'm missing somebody. Um, you mentioned Wiggins. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to pull it up right now, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that's a name I'm tip of my tongue. I ain't thinking about either. Oh, yes. Uh, R.J. Barrett for the Knicks. Yeah. I said, I knew it was somebody. And then just look at the roster. Let's see. Corey Joseph. You know, that's another guy. Um, the, the guy used to play for Orlando Magic, Kim Birch. Oh, yeah. Toronto, yep. They got him a couple of pieces. You know, I, I see Anthony Bennett on the roster. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> He's coaching. Nah, he playing. He playing. He on the roster. Yeah. <laughs> and who, you know, Trey Lyles, Nikhil, Alexander Walker, uh, Thorpe from the Thunder, Dwight Powell, Andrew Nicholson. Well, he's still, he's still playing. Anyways. So, you got a nice roster right there. I think Canada is a... I forgot about Andrew Nicholson, too. Mm-hmm. Say Bonaventure. Andrew Nixon. Yeah. But back to the USA. You know, they had a starting lineup with uh Dame, Bradley Bill, Durant, Bam, and Draymond. So you know, could they shake may change things around? I don't know. We'll see. But I think if they get the other three guys in, I think they'll be get more balance. You have more scoring. 
I, I hate the lack of bigs on this team, though. You know, that's my only concern. You know, if they had something else besides Kevin Love as a big, then I'd probably be satisfied. But, you know, if Bam gets hurt or gets in foul trouble, then you got to throw in Love. I, I'm not saying, ladies and gentlemen, we're not saying Kevin Love is a scrub or something like that. It's just kind of like. It's kind of like, why is he on the team? He kind of like. It's, it's like past his prime. Yeah. And then, and, yeah, this one. and then on top of that, D-Law, it's just like he hasn't played a whole bunch of, over the past three years or so. That's That was my thing why he got selected, too. It was like, this dude really hadn't done much over the past three years. Nah, he just, he just there. In a sense, but I think some people they just like the fact that they're going to represent USA. So, you know, that's how he's looking at it. But maybe a couple guys did turn it down as well. I mean, yeah. I definitely wouldn't doubt it, but to go that low to go get Kevin Love, now that's a lot of people you had to go through to get him. Very true. Very true. Very true. So before we get out of here, D Lock, um, going back to game three right now, you know, going in the second quarter right now, what are your thoughts, you know, this game so far in your eyes? Well, for me, like I said, it seems like um, the Suns are not even clicking that good right now. And they're still causing issues for Milwaukee. So I just feel like that's going to be a big, big problem. They can mess around and sweep them, man. I definitely can see that happen. Yeah. I, both teams are playing tough. You know, it's getting a little cheapy out there. You know, Giannis is hustling. Aiden's having a good game so far. 60 points. 7-8 for shooting. Where they showing the stat right now. Um, you know, Phoenix is up, up by 6. And Holiday, good pass to Brooke Lopez down low. So, you know, I just think, you know, they just get some good few stops, get ahead. Because Phoenix never has been down big in this finals yet. And good defense by Giannis right there. And and they got that switch right there with uh, Torian Craig and Brooke Lopez, but he stepped out of bounds. So that's the thing, you know, like you mentioned, you see more time for Bobby Portis right now. I mean, he's not in the game right now, but you see him get more time. But those switches with the bigs, they got to, they got to do something about that. And Chris Middleton just hit a big time three right there. Yeah. I mean, that's going to have to play a huge part on. You know, you're going to have to ask a lot from Brook Lopez. And you see, they need to switch with Aiden onto Giannis. Yep. So uh, you have a lot of different um, things going on right now that's going to make a big difference with them. But I just feel like the Phoenix are just too much, man. <laughs> There's. They're too deep. And then Chris Paul, he just made another mid-range jumper again. And then uh, if I was Boone Holes, I'd be going to Brooke Lopez. Like, hey, the dude shoots the mid-range pretty well. If you up on, if you happen to get switched on him, get on his ass. Yep. You know, you have your hand up ready. That's what he keeps doing. He's doing it over and over and over. And then, you know, Got good defense, middle 10 on Paul. Credit turnover. Yep. And then I can't believe Miles Bridge let Brooke Lopez drive on him like that. Yeah, turn my stomach. Yeah. Yep. If you're trying to be more aggressive, and, you know, Brooke Lopez, I mean, Bridge is just. 
let him do what he want. And then Middleton, ah, missed the three point eight with the rebound. And they're gunning. So we're going to leave it on this note. There's seven minutes and left in the second quarter. Paul with a missed shot. But D Lock, how can the people find you on social media? You guys, find me at Black Dash 813. Ooh. <laughs> uh, Black Dash 813 on Twitter. And, yeah. <laughs> Black Dash 813 on Twitter and, and Instagram. Uh, we tweet a lot, a lot of, about a lot of stuff. Uh, so definitely follow, follow me there. Uh, but I will be saying a lot about this Orlando stuff soon. So let know they can find you at. And also, hey, make sure y'all follow uh, D Lock on Twitter. Please do. With the Olympus coming around, he's been t- tweeting about a lot of stuff during the trials and stuff like that. And I appreciate sure he be tweeting about the Olympus. So do follow him there for all your track information and logic right, and stuff like that. This man has a lot of knowledge in the track and field sport. So please do follow him on Twitter. All right? Please do. Because y'all be missing out. Uh, you can find me on social media. <laughs> find me on social media at Spawn4288 on Twitter. That is Spawn4288 on Twitter. Please do follow the show on um uh, on Twitter as well at Fastbreak at IESR. That is Fastbreak IESR. Also, I do another show on the side called The Crooks Process. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook. That is The Crooks Process on Instagram and Facebook. I recently just dropped an episode yesterday. You know, so please do follow me there and you'll see that episode dropped in the link. But thank you for tuning in with us ladies and tonight, ladies and gentlemen. This wine about sports is right behind us with one Mr. Mike Pat. So please do tune in. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, we, we are out. We'll talk to y'all next week. Out there.